Electric cars weren't always fast, they weren't always exciting, and they definitely weren't built for racing. But that changed. Formula E cars can hit 200 miles per hour, they can regenerate 40% of their energy while racing, they can out-accelerate some of the fastest gas-powered cars on the planet, and they do it all without burning a single drop of fuel. Big names like Jaguar, Porsche, and Nissan aren't just competing, they're using Formula E to develop better electric cars for the road. Battery life, efficiency, and performance all tested and perfected on the track. But this didn't happen overnight. Subscribe now and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. It all started with a dinner in Paris. In 2011, John Todd, the head of motorsport's governing body, sat down with Alejandro Agag, a businessman with deep connections in racing. Todd had a vision, a fully electric racing series that could help shape the future of cars. Agag knew it was a risk. People weren't excited about electric vehicles back then. They thought they were slow, boring, impractical. But Todd believed racing could change that. By 2014, the first Formula E season was underway. But this wasn't like any racing season before. Instead of using massive purpose-built racetracks far from the public, Formula E took the battle to the streets. Tight, twisting circuits through the hearts of the world's biggest cities, New York, London, Hong Kong. The idea was simple. Bring the action directly to the people and show them what electric cars can really do. And from the very first race, it was clear this was different. Instead of the deafening roar of traditional engines, Formula E cars hummed and whined. Their electric motors delivered instant torque. The acceleration was brutal. These cars went from 0 to 60 in just a few seconds, just as fast as Formula One machines. But there was a problem. Battery life. In the early days, the technology just wasn't there yet. The first-generation cars couldn't last an entire race on a single charge. So, halfway through, drivers had to pull into the pits and jump into a second car. It looked strange, almost ridiculous, but it was a stepping stone. By season 5, everything changed. The Gen 2 car arrived, and suddenly, mid-race car swaps were gone. The new batteries were stronger, more efficient, and drivers could push harder and strategize more, while fighting for every inch without worrying about running out of power too soon. Formula E was proving that electric racing made it better. It quickly became a massive test lab for electric vehicle technology. Every race was an experiment. Every lap pushed the limits of what an electric car could do. And the innovations, they started rolling in. One of the biggest breakthroughs, regenerative braking. Unlike traditional cars, where braking just wastes energy. Formula E cars turn braking into power. Every time a driver slows down, the energy that would normally be lost as heat goes right back into the battery. That means more range, more efficiency, and smarter energy use. Today, this same technology is in electric road cars everywhere, from the Jaguar I-Pace to the Nissan Leaf. But Formula E didn't stop there. Teams started using digital twins, virtual copies of their race cars that could simulate performance before a single wheel touched the track. These digital models allowed engineers to test new ideas, tweak software, and optimize every tiny detail. Now, car manufacturers are using this same strategy for road vehicles, fine-tuning performance through software updates instead of expensive mechanical changes. Then came battery efficiency. In the early days, Formula E batteries struggled. They barely lasted a race. But with every season, the technology improved. Nissan, for example, boosted its battery capacity by an incredible 181% thanks to what it learned from racing. That kind of progress is now making everyday electric cars more practical, letting them go further on a single charge. And then there's energy management. Unlike gas-powered cars, where refueling is quick and easy, electric racing requires strategy. Teams use advanced AI and machine learning to predict exactly how much energy their drivers need to finish a race at full speed. These same smart algorithms, they're now making their way into consumer EVs, making them optimize power use and increase range. But Formula E isn't just about making better cars, it's about changing minds. For years, people thought electric cars were weak, slow, or just not exciting. Formula E shattered that idea. These cars race at 200 miles per hour, they drift through tight corners, they battle wheel to wheel in some of the most intense racing you'll ever see. And that's just what makes Formula E different. It's not just about speed, it's about strategy, efficiency, and innovation. Unlike traditional motorsports, where the fastest car usually wins, Formula E races are unpredictable. Drivers must balance aggression with energy conservation. Push too hard early on and you'll run out of power before the finish line. 
hold back too much, and you'll use valuable positions. It's a chess match played at lightning speed. And the technology, it's only getting better. The Gen 3 car, introduced in 2023, is the lightest, fastest, and most advanced Formula E car yet. It recovers an incredible 600 kilowatts of energy through braking, enough to power a house. It can hit 200 miles per hour while using less than a quarter of the energy a Formula One car needs. And it's only the beginning. The Gen 4 car set for 2026 will push things even further. More power, more range, faster charging. It's another leap forward, not just for Formula E, but for the electric cars you see on the road. Formula E is proving one thing. The future isn't coming. It's already here. But none of this would be possible without the teams, the cars, and the drivers who shape the series. Some entered the sport with big reputations. Others had everything to prove. Jaguar TCS Racing became a force to be reckoned with, pushing the boundaries of electric racing. With Mitch Evans and Nick Cassidy behind the wheel, they weren't just competing, they were winning. The duo delivered unforgettable performances, taking podiums and victories that cemented Jaguar as a top contender, but they weren't the only ones making history. Taghua Porsche took Formula E by storm. Pascal Wehrlein's dominance, starting with a victory in Mexico City, set the tone. Porsche's electric powertrain became one of the strongest on the grid, and Antonio Felix da Costa proved it wasn't just about speed, it was about strategy. The team's ability to adapt, optimize energy use, and fight until the last lap made them a nightmare for their rivals. Then there's DS Penske, a team that just doesn't know how to quit. With John Eric Verne leading the charge, they became one of the most consistent teams in the sport. Verne, the only two-time champion in Formula E history, carried the team with his aggressive driving and precise energy management. Alongside Maximilian Günther, the team refused to back down, delivering top-tier performances season after season. But Formula E isn't just about the top teams, it's about the fierce battles across the grid. Nissan, a powerhouse in electric technology, pushed the limits of innovation. Their drivers, Oliver Rowland and Norman Natto, fought for every position, proving that Nissan's electric engineering could keep up with the best. Andretti carried the spirit of American racing into the series, with Jake Dennis taking home a world championship. Mahindra, a name not many expected to shine in motorsports, kept evolving, using every race as a chance to improve. And then there was Envision Racing, a team that turned efficiency into an art form, with Nick Cassidy leading them to a championship fight. But a team is only as strong as its drivers, and Formula E has seen legends rise. Lucas de Grassi holds the record for the most podiums in Formula E history. A driver who doesn't just race, he builds legacies. He was there from the beginning, shaping the championships with his aggressive style and relentless energy. His rivalry with Sebastian Bumi defined the early years of Formula E, delivering some of the most intense battles the sport has ever seen. Bumi, another giant of the series, became a master of precision. He didn't waste energy, he didn't make mistakes, he just won. Then came a new wave of champions. Nick Cassidy, a driver who never lets up, made a name for himself with breathtaking comebacks and flawless execution. Jake Dennis, a relentless competitor, proved that consistency wins championships. Pascal Wehrlein, the newest world champion, took everything he learned from the years of fighting at the front and turned it into a title-winning season. And Antonio Felix da Costa? He controlled races with strategy so sharp, it left his rivals guessing. These drivers are proving that electric racing isn't the future, it's already here. But none of this would matter without the cars, and Formula E's machines aren't just fast, they're changing the way the world thinks about electric vehicles. And it's not just about racing too. Formula E is shaping the future of electric cars in ways you might not expect. The technology developed on the track is making its way into the cars people drive every day. Even the way energy is managed, how cars optimize power use, how software updates improve performance, it's all being refined in Formula E and transferred to customer vehicles. But Formula E's biggest impact might not be under the hood, it's in the way people see electric cars. For years, electric vehicles they had a reputation. They were seen as slow, boring, and just not as exciting as traditional cars. But then Formula E came along. It showed the world something different. EVs that could hit top speeds over 200 miles per hour, that could battle wheel to wheel on the tightest circuits, that could win races through smart energy management. It proved that electric cars weren't just about being clean, they were about being better. Cities that host Formula E races don't just see high speed action, they see change. 
charging infrastructure improves, discussion about sustainability it takes center stage, and more people start thinking about switching to electric. And now, as the series moves into the future, one thing is clear, Formula E isn't slowing down. The next generation of electric racing is coming. More power, more efficiency, more innovation. And with new teams, new drivers, and new technology on the horizon, the best is yet to come. Now, the question is, what's next? Which car do you want us to deep dive into into the next video? Let us know.